Hi, I'm Jennifer of Celtic Knot Crochet, and today in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the Celtic Knot Square. This square is part of the Moogly blog, Crochet Along. It is square number 12. In this video, I'm going to show you each step of the process. So I'll show you which yarns I used, which hook I used, and then how to crochet each of these sections. These are crocheted cords. I'll show you how to weave them together, and then I'll show you how to crochet around the outside edge. Don't worry about weaving. I give you a diagram that's available at my blog, CelticKnotCrochet.com, in our resource library for free. You can print it out there, and then you use that to help you place all the cords so you get this nice decorative knot. And I hope that you enjoy making it as much as I did. Please make sure to give us a thumbs up and click to subscribe. Thanks for watching and let's get started. Let's go over the supplies you'll need to make the Celtic Knot Square. First up, I used With Love by Red Heart in three different colors. This one is called Peacock, and then for the light blue I used Iced Aqua, and then for the gray background I used Pewter. One skein will make more than one square, so that's all you need for those. Uh, for the hook I used a six millimeter J hook. You'll also need about four stitch markers, locking stitch markers. You'll need a tapestry needle so you can weave in the ends and join the different cords that make up the Celtic knot in the center. You'll also need some supplies to weave the Celtic knot and you'll see these later when we do the weaving, but you'll need a piece of cork board or foam core poster board that's at least eight by eight inches, that is. You'll need some straight sewing pins and you'll need to print out the diagram that you can find in the Celtic Knot Resource Library. Here's an overview of how we would make this square. First, you're going to crochet these cords. There are three different cords, two diagonal cords and one square cord. Then we're going to weave them into the knot. Then we're going to work into the knot around the outside edge with the pewter, the gray, and build up the stitches to make an even square ending with the same color we use for the cords on the outside. So let's get started by making the diagonal cord first. I've already made one. They're both the same exact pattern. You can see like that. So let me show you how to make that. For the diagonal cord, you're going to chain 55. Now what you could do is you could chain 10 and then mark it with a stitch marker and then chain another 10 or 20 and as you go you can just mark those along and then all you have to do is count by tens at the end. So now I have my chain of 55. You can take the stitch markers out. All the measurements are listed in the pattern at CelticKnotCrochet.com. Then you're going to turn the chain over and you're going to work into this back bump. I'm going to do it quickly here, but if you've never done that before, this is the front of the chain and this is the back. We're going to work in those back bumps. You can watch a video on this technique right there. 
and we're going to count and work into the third chain from the hook and we're going to do several double crochets 19 total so that's one and we're going to work across this chain until we have a total of 19 double crochets. This is what your cord would look like so far and it's very easy. If you lose count you can just count each double crochet. It's all those posts right there. Now we're going to make the point of this diagonal cord and we need to do a treble crochet which is yarn over twice put our hook in, yarn over, pull through the stitch. Now we have four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, through two, through two. And that gives us a nice tall stitch. Then we're going to chain one and we're going to do what's called an extended treble. It's a little trick you can do to any stitch to make it just a little bit taller. So we yarn over twice, then we're going to put our hook into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, still have those four loops on our hook but we're going to yarn over and pull just through the first one and if you see we still have four loops so now we complete as usual yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two you can see that made the stitch just a little bit taller then we're going to do a chain two pico chain one chain two and then what I like to do, instead of going into any of these chains, I like to come here down to the stitch I just completed. You can see here's the top of that extended treble right here. See that right there? And I'm going to insert my hook into the loop just below that front loop right over here. So that's on the side of the top of that extended treble. Right here, yarn over, pull through that loop, and through the loop on my hook for a slip stitch. And that creates a really nice open chain two pico. Then we're going to do two more treble crochets, and this is all in that same stitch again. And one more treble, yarn over twice, hook into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, then pull through two, through two, through two. And what we just did there is we created the point that makes up the edge of the diagonal cord. Next we're going to work 25 more double crochets, still working in that back bar of the chain and we're going to work 25 all the way over here towards the other end of the diagonal cord. Here you can see I've completed 25 more double crochets and now I'm ready to do another point in the next chain just like we did before. Yarn over twice Put my hook in, yarn over, pull through two, three times. Then I'm going to chain one. Then I'm going to do the extended treble. Yarn over, pull through the stitch. Yarn over, pull through one loop only. Then yarn over, pull through two, through two, through two. Then the chain two pico, one, two. And then here's the top of my stitch and I'm going to insert into that loop just below the top of the stitch. Yarn over, pull through everything. Then two more trebles. Yarn over twice, put my hook in, then pull through two, through two, through two. Yarn over twice again, hook in, yarn over, pull through the base. Then yarn over, pull through two, through two, through two. And there's our second point. And now I'm going to work double crochets in the remaining stitches here on the cord. Now 
and that was seven double crochets to end. If we lay it down, you can see a point at each end of the diagonal cord. Now we're going to fasten off and join the same color for the next round. Now that we're going to do another row of the same color, you can choose to do a different color if you'd like, but I just wanted my cord to be thicker. So I put the slip knot on my hook, I pick up where I began the first stitch of the round, I'm going to join with a single crochet. So my slip knot is on my hook, I insert my hook into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through the first stitch, then yarn over, pull through two, and now I'm ready to go. And I'm going to do 19 more single crochets all the way across. And that is going to take me to that chain one space that I created right near the point. There I've completed my first 20 single crochets, the joining single crochet plus 19, and now I've come up to that chain one space right before the point. I'm going to put a single crochet in the back loop of that chain one space, then I'm going to put a single crochet in the extended treble, and now I'm at the chain two pico. You can see here's one chain and another chain. And I'm going to work in the back loop of that and do another single crochet. And now this next one, I'm going to put several stitches in here and I'm going to mark the center one with one of the stitch markers. And this will help you for your next round. So the second chain of the chain two pico, I'm going to work into the back loop and do a single crochet. Then I'm going to chain one and then do another single crochet and that helps the point to stay pointy and I'm going to put the stitch marker right there in that chain one that I made in between the two stitches and that'll help me on the next round. Now I'm going to work in each stitch across until I get to the next chain one space, which I believe is 28 stitches. Here you can see my chain one at the point, and then I work the 28 single crochets across, and I am back at the other point. There's the chain one, so I'll put my hook into the back loop and single crochet. Then I'm going to work under both loops of the extended treble. Now here I am at the chain two pico. I'm going to put my hook into the back loop. Single crochet in that first chain and now the second chain. Put my hook into the back loop. Single crochet, chain one single crochet and I will mark it. Mark that chain one right here with the stitch marker so I can find it when I do the edging. And now I'm going to single crochet through both loops to the end of the cord. and that's nine single crochets. And I will cut the yarn and now you can see I have a diagonal cord all one color. Now we're going to edge both sides of this cord with the lighter blue. To add the light blue edging to this cord, I'm going to put my slip knot on my hook and then again I will start where I began. This is the end that I began at. And I will 
put my hook into the back loop of each stitch. So I insert my hook into the back loop, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and through the loop on my hook. That's called a slip stitch. I'm going to put my hook next stitch, but the back loop only. And I'm going to do this loosely because I don't want to shorten my cord or make it bunch up. And I continue like that all the way to where the stitch marker is waiting for me. Now here I am at that chain one space. Take out the stitch marker and in that chain one space I'm going to continue to work in the back loop. But I'm going to slip stitch, chain one, and slip stitch again. And that just helps that point to stay pointy. And I'll repeat that at the other point. So I'll slip stitch all the way across in the back loop when I get to that chain one space, I will insert my hook through the back loop, slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch, and then slip stitch down to the end. Now that I have the outside of the cord edged with the light blue, I'm going to edge the inside as well. You might choose not to do that, but I liked how it looked that way. So I put my slip knot on my hook, and I go to the opposite end that I started the other edging because if I'm right-handed I work this way right to left. If you're a lefty you would be doing the opposite that I'm doing but it still will work out for you. And as you see because we worked in the back bar of the chain we have these nice edges along the other side that look just like the top. This is actually the bottom of all the stitches but it looks the same so we can still do the same technique. So we put our hook into the back loop of the stitch, yarn over and pull through everything. And we continue like that all the way across. Nothing fancy here. You just keep working that slip stitch all the way until you get to the end of the cord. Here is the diagonal cord completed with the light blue slip stitch edging on both sides. There are quite a few ends. You can weave some of them in if you'd like, but I like to save them because I use them to sew the Celtic knot together. You'll make two of these just like that, and next we'll do the square cord. To make the square cord, you're going to first chain 54. So this is a nice long chain, just like the other one, very similar in length. And now we're going to work in the back bar of the chain, like we did before. Skip the first two chains and work into the third and do a double crochet. And we're going to do a double crochet in seven more. So you will have a total of eight double crochets. Now we're going to work on the first corner of this square cord. So we're going to do two double crochets in the next stitch. One, two, you just cram them right in there. Then we're going to do a double crochet in the one after that, just one. And then in the next chain, We'll do two in that stitch. And you can see how that starts to create a bend in the cord. So we have two, one, and then two. Then we're going to work ten double crochets. So 
So now you see I have 10 double crochets and this is going to be a side of the square. So this is a partial side where we started, a corner, and now we're going to repeat this around the square three more times. So now we're at the corner, I'm going to do two double crochets in the next stitch, one, two, and then a single, one double crochet in the stitch after that, then two double crochets in the next stitch. And now you can see that it's bending or curved again. So I'm going to do 10 double crochets, then do the corner, then do 10 double crochets, then do the last corner, and then there will be just two double crochets at the end. Here you can see the square cord starting to take shape. So we had eight double crochets here, and then we did the increases at the corner. Then 10 double crochets, same corner increases. 10 double crochets, same corner increases. 10 double crochets again, last corner increases, and then just two double crochets here. And that is what helps us join it together so it's all nice and even. Now we're going to do a second row, just like we did a second row for the other cords. Put our slip knot on our hook and we're going to join where we began in that first stitch, put our hook in, yarn over, pull through a stitch, yarn over, pull through two. This is going to have several sections repeat as well. For this first section, we're going to single crochet in the next seven stitches after that joining one for a total of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we're going to do some increases to continue and keep that curve, but it'll be a little bit different than the row before. So we'll do two single crochets in this next stitch, then a single crochet in the next, and the one after that. So a single and a single, just one and one, and then two single crochets in the stitch after that. So two, one, one, two. And that continues the curve, keeps that nice shape in place, as you work around each corner. Next we're going to single crochet in 11 stitches. And here we are at the corner again. You'll see we have those increases from the row before and then we're going to do two single crochets in that first stitch, then one in the next, one in the one after that, and then two single crochets in the next. And that's our second corner. Now we'll do 11 stitches again. And we'll repeat that all the way around until we get to the last three stitches. Here you can see I'm almost completed with the second round. So I did eight single crochets, then the corner increases, two single, one, one, two single, then 11 single crochets, then the corner increase, two, one, one, two, then again, 11 single crochets, then two, one, one, two, and then 11 single crochets for the last side, and then the corner, two, one, one, two. Just finished the two, one, one, two. And then I have three stitches left here. And I would just do single crochet in each of those stitches and fasten off. 
To add the slip stitch edging to the square cord is very simple. Just like before, we put our slip knot on the hook. We find the first stitch on the outside edge. Here it is right here. Insert our hook through the center so you're only picking up that back loop. Yarn over, pull through the stitch, and through the loop on your hook for a slip stitch. And then loosely work a slip stitch in each stitch all the way around. No fancy increases anymore. No additional chains. Just nice and loose slip stitch all the way around this edge and then we'll repeat the same thing along the inside edge just like we did the outside edge. Here you can see the square cord completed with the edging on both sides and then we have here the two diagonal cords completed. So now we're ready to weave them together. Here you can see that I have printed out the diagram from CelticKnotCrochet.com, our resource library. It's free there for you. Uh, you'll see a link to the diagram in the description below this video. I also have several straight pins and then this here is a piece of cork board with a piece of styrofoam underneath it, but you can use just the cork board or foam core board works just fine as well. According to the directions, we're going to start where this red asterisk is, and I'm going to use one of the diagonal cords, and I'm going to match it up with the diagram. And I pin right there. You can see there's the red asterisk. Pin the end there. Pin the point at the point on the diagram. Then pull the cord down to the other point here. and follow this green path. You see that is a green path of this diagonal. And that first cord, very simple to lay on the diagram. Next we're going to start at this black asterisk with the other diagonal cord. So now we're going to start weaving over and under based on what the diagram says. So I will put the end down on the black asterisk as before. And you can see in the diagram these dotted lines. These show where the two cord ends will meet. Put another pin there at the corner. And now I'm going to look underneath at the diagram. And right here it says the white that I'm on right now is going to go under the green. So I take the end of this cord and go underneath like so. And then I look and peek at the diagram and I can see that the white is going over the green just like that. The blue isn't here yet, so I don't have to worry about that. And here I come to my next point. Pin at the point. Now I look, the white is again going over the blue, so I don't need to worry about that. That's the last cord. And here is the green, and the white is going under the green, so I need to go under this next cord and then if I peek I can see that the white is going over the green now and it meets up with where I began so I can put this one pin over both ends of the cord 
And now you can see how we have those two cords woven together. And the last piece is the blue square cord. So now we need to find on the diagram where to begin that, and that's where the black square, solid square is. You see it right down here. And here are those dotted lines to show that this square cord is going to meet up underneath this cord right here. We always hide the joins. And we start with the beginning of the cord where we had those eight double crochets. And tuck that under. I want to make sure I pin the beginning in place. And now if I just went under, I know I'm going to have to go over because Celtic knots alternate with over and under, but I can peek under the di at the diagram and see that the blue is going to go under the green. And now it's going to go over where that other cord was meeting up and hide where those two ends meet. We won't see that in the finished project. Peek at the diagram and we can see that the blue is going under the white. And now I'm going to go over this other section where the cord ends were. I know I need to go on over that. And now I peek at the diagram and the blue is going under the green. You can see that right there. So I feed that through just like this. And then I'm going to go over here. And here we can see that this is where we started. I can peel this back and you can see there's the beginning of the square cord and these are going to match up. Place that back over the top and you can see that all those ends where they met up are now hidden and we have a completed Celtic knot. The next step is to pin especially here where those cord ends meet up but I like to pin most of the crossings like this so that when I take it off of the cork board here, everything stays in place. So pin across all or several Take pins out of the corners so we can remove this from the diagram and the board. So I'll move the board out of the way. And here we have the completed Celtic knot. And this is the right side. All of the cords have been facing right side up. And we're going to flip it over. and use these ends to join everything together. Now what I like to do as a little tip here is just to get me started I take one yarn tail from one cord end and one yarn tail from the other one and tie a double knot. And that helps hold everything together. And then I'll do that on the other side of the cord. Maybe with the dark blue, maybe with the light blue, doesn't really matter. And I'll do that on all of the cord ends. And I'll use my yarn needle here. Um,
and whip stitch the ends together. And I'll do that for all three areas where the cord ends meet up. And I'll make sure that it's underneath. You can see here it's underneath this section so it's not showing. But then I'll join that section to the cord area right near it. And if you just pick up some loops on the back of the cord you'll be all set and you can see now those two are connected and the design's not going to go anywhere. So I'll do that at all those joins and work some whip stitching around to join all these cords together and weave in those ends so that I'm ready to add the rounds of crochet around the completed knot. Here you can see the knot completely woven and sewn together. I'll show you the wrong side. I wove in all the ends and I joined here where all the cords meet up with another cord. I whip stitch those together and so this won't come apart. Next we're going to work the edging around the knot. I'll show you with the finished square again. So here you see we're going to work crochet stitches into the side of the knot. But as you see, the knot's edging is not interrupted. So there's a technique I use to do that. So the knot still pops out and you still see these nice edges around with the iced aqua. There's another thing that you'll want to use for the project. In addition to weaving the knot, you want to use this diagram. But I want to show you as well that this is where at point E we're going to start the edging. And you can see that I gave you one side diagram. So section one will be these three chain three spaces. Section two goes ar across this middle section right here. And you have three chains right there, uh, three chain three sections. And then section three has three more. And every side, since it's a square, every side will have the same amount. And then in the corner, you can see this is labeled on the diagram, corner chain two, and then you'll end up putting one there as well. So whatever we do across one side, we're going to repeat all the way around all four sides. In order to get the knot to pop out and to not interrupt this nice edging, we're going to work in a non-traditional loop. And if you look here, because we did that slip stitch edging in the back loop, now we have these nice loops back here. You see these dark, darker blue loops? That's where we're going to insert our hook when we work the edging. And then the stitches will not show on the front side, on the right side. And I just think it makes it look a lot nicer. I put the slip knot of the dark gray on my hook. And then I pick up the knot. This is point E. And you can see there's that first loop behind the corner on the side. I'm going to insert my hook into that loop and then I'm going to yarn over and complete the single crochet. Yarn over, pull through the stitch, yarn over, pull through two. Now I'm going to chain three and I'm going to skip the next stitch. So see if you turn it, if you hold it like this it's hard to see so you want to turn it so you can see that back side. So I'm going to skip that one and then work in this one. Same thing. Put my hook in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and then I'm going to do that again. Chain three, skip one more, put my hook in, and do a single crochet. So you see I have two 
chain three spaces all lined up and ready to go and now I'm going to work chain three but this time I'm going to skip two stitches one two and put a single crochet in the one after that and now my section one is completed with three chain three spaces Now I'm going to move on to section two. Going to chain three and I'm going to single crochet somewhere on this next section. Now I know that I want it to be the center chain three to kind of line up with the center of this section. So for you, you might skip two, you might skip three. So I put my single crochet there then I'm going to chain three again and I'll skip one stitch and so as I look at it I just hold it up and I see okay does that look like it's kinda right here in the middle yes it does if I try it out and this chain three is not in the middle I'll just move it over no biggie then chain three again Now that I've completed section one and section two, I'm ready to start the last section. And I found out that if I want to make sure that I end in the right stitch right here next to the corner, I should count backwards. So I'm going to count eight stitches. So here's my first one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to insert my hook on section three into the eighth stitch from the corner. Still working in the back. Chain three, skip two, do another single crochet, chain three. Now I'm only going to skip one. And then chain three again. And now I'm going to go in that stitch right there. That's the last one of the side right next to the corner. So now you can see section one, section two, section three. Every side's going to look the same. And then when we get to the corner, we're going to chain two and then we're going to single crochet around the corner in that first stitch of the next side. So this is the last stitch of this side. Here's that corner point. We look behind and there's that first stitch of the next side. If you're having a hard time working into those loops in the back, I'll show you a little trick. So we're ready to do our next side with chain three, skip one, and what you can do is you can take a yarn needle and have it go through the loop and pull up the loop a little. You can see how that loosens it and then you can much easier insert your hook like so. And I'll just repeat the same thing I did for the first side along all four sides. I'm coming to the end of that first round of edging. I'm going to skip the last stitch here and then put my hook into that last loop behind the corner. And then I chain two. And then this is that very first single crochet I made. I'm going to slip stitch, show you that again, put my hook in, yarn over, pull through the stitch and through the loop on my hook. And here's that chain two there for the corner and I've closed it up. And now you can see, this is what your square would look like at this point. You'll have nine chain three spaces across each side and a chain two space in each corner. If you'd like, as you make the chain two spaces, 
you can put a stitch marker in them and then when you go around for this next round you'll be able to find where you are without missing it. So I highly recommend that. You can do it as you go or at the end like I'm doing. So now we can start work on the solid rounds that we'll do around the knot. We're going to be working inside all of these chain three spaces. We're going to do a couple different stitches so that they all come out and the end the same height. I begin by putting my hook into that first chain three space and slip stitching. Then I'm going to chain three and I'm going to work one more double crochet in that first chain three space. That chain three counts as a double crochet so now I have two in there and then I'm going to put three double crochets in the next two spaces. One, two, three. In case you don't know how to do a double crochet, we did those for the cord. Yarn over, hook in, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, through two. So here you can see I have two double crochets, then three and three. For this section two, I'm going to do three treble crochets in each of those three chain three spaces. Treble crochet is you yarn over twice, hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop, four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, through two, through two. And I'll fill in each of those chain three spaces with those. So three in that one. Three in the next one. Remember, if you need this to go slower, you can click on your video to change the speed of this YouTube video. So now you can see three trebles in each of those in the section two. Now section three. We're going to go back to double crochet. Three double crochets in the first one and then three double crochets in the next one. And now we're going to do two in the last one. This, this side mirrors the first side. So you can see here, two double crochets, three, three. Then three trebles, three trebles, three trebles. Then three doubles, three doubles, two doubles. Every side is going to look the same, just like that. The only thing that is a little tricky is the corner. So now that we know we've gotten to the corner, take out our stitch marker. And you're going to work an extended double crochet, then a treble, and then another extended double crochet. This is similar to the extended treble crochet that we already did here for the diagonal cords. I'm going to yarn over, put my hook into that chain two space, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on my hook, yarn over, and I pull through just one loop now I yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That just makes it a little bit taller than these other double crochets. Then I'm going to do a treble, yarn over twice, and now I'm going to do one more extended double crochet. Yarn over, pull up a loop, then yarn over, pull through the first loop only, then yarn over, pull through two, through two. And that helps us go around the corner and not pull it too tight. And now we're going to continue just like we did on the first side across this side. And you'll do that on the next three sides and do this corner 
everywhere where you have put the stitch marker, that chain two space. Another tip you'd like to do, so you're ready for the next round, is to mark that treble crochet with your stitch marker. And you'll see why in the next round. I've just completed the last corner with the extended double, treble, extended double, and here is my starting chain three. I'm going to insert my hook into the top, yarn over, and pull through everything for a slip stitch. And now this first round of solid stitches is complete. You can see, look like this. And as we add rounds, it'll get more and more even. For the next round, we're going to chain two, and then we're going to work a half double crochet in every stitch around. Half double is yarn over, put your hook in, yarn over, pull through the base, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. I'm going to work that all the way down the side until I get to the corner, and then at the corner, I'm going to put three half doubles into that treble crochet that we marked with the stitch marker. Here you see I'm at the stitch, that tall treble. I'm going to take out the stitch marker, put in three half doubles in that stitch. One, two, three, and before I move on, I want to mark, here are those three that I just did, and I'm going to mark the center one with a stitch marker. So on my next round, I know exactly where that center stitch is for the corner. And then I continue repeating the half double crochets all the way across to the next corner while I'll do three in the treble and mark the center one. I've completed the third round and here I am at my starting chain two. I'm going to insert my hook into the top of the chain two and yarn over, pull through everything for a slip stitch. And then I can fasten off, cut the yarn, yarn over, pull through. And now here you can see the first three rounds of the edging are complete, and now we're going to add two more rounds of the peacock to tie in to the knot center. Now to begin round four of the edging, I put the slip knot of peacock on my hook, then I'm going to join with a half double crochet, and I'm going to join right where I put that slip stitch to end the last round. Here's that starting chain two of the round before, and I'm going to work right into the top of that. So I yarn over, insert my hook into the slip stitch, yarn over, pull through the slip stitch. Now I have, you can see, three loops on my hook. One, two, three. Yarn over, pull through all three. And that's how you join with a half double crochet. This row is very similar. This round is very similar to the round before. I'm going to work half double crochet in each stitch all the way around, except at the corners. I'm going to work three half double crochet in that stitch marked with the stitch marker. Here I am coming up to the stitch marked with the stitch marker. Take that out. I'm going to work three half double crochets in that stitch. One, two, three, and then I'm going to go back. Here's those three that I just made. One, two, three, and I'm going to put my stitch marker into the second stitch. So for the next round, I know exactly where that center stitch is and keep on going with the half double crochet. Now I'm about to end round four. I've completed all of the half double crochets in each stitch around. 
Here's my first half double crochet. I'm going to find the top of it, those two loops at the top, and then yarn over, pull through everything, and that closes up that round. And here you see what it looks like. Now you could stop there if you like, but I added one more round of single crochet. To begin that, we're going to chain one, single crochet in that same stitch right there, and then single crochet in each stitch all the way around. When we get to the corners, we're going to do something a little bit different than we've done before. Here I am at my first corner. Here is the stitch mark with the stitch marker. And what I'm going to do is work two single crochets in the stitch before the one marked. One, two, so we'll put the increase there. Then I'll take out the stitch marker and just work one stitch in the corner. And then this is the stitch right after. I'm going to work two single crochets in that one. So in each corner you're going to do two single crochets before the stitch marked, and two single crochets after, and then one single crochet in that stitch marked with the stitch marker. I've done all of my single crochets around the square, doing my last single crochet in the last stitch, then I'm going to put my hook into that first single crochet, yarn over and pull through everything. That's a slip stitch. And there we have the Celtic Knot Square is complete. You might like to wet block it, which means you just wet the whole square with cool water, press out the excess water in a clean towel, and then lay it out on a dry towel. You could even use your cork board underneath so you can pin the corners and the sides nice and taut and then let it dry completely overnight or you can combine it with other squares as is. So I hope you enjoyed making this Celtic Knot Square. Please don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up and make sure to watch the next Celtic Knot Crochet video.